Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in New York City. I'm here with Ash Kokarni. Ash, how are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. How are you doing, Mike? Good. So you're a senior VP and a general manager at Informatica. That's good. And you guys have been talking about three dimensions of data. How are you guys unpacking that and, and communicating what you're doing there to the market? Well, so effectively, the way we've been looking at the three dimensions, it's all about big transaction data, big interaction data, and big data processing. And frankly, this, this conference is all about pretty much all three of them. Probably though, big data processing seems to dominate in all the conversations that are going on. Informatica's role in helping our customers solve these problems ends up being all about providing a single mechanism, a single platform, if you will, to use the same set of skills that they have developed over the years working on traditional platforms and now bring them to bear on big data. Because generally that's been the biggest problem within big data, to really find the right kinds of development assets that you can bring to bear on getting all this meaning out of all the data that people are collecting. And that's been a big challenge. So when people talk about the varieties of data and the velocities of data and the volumes of data, the way we capture that is in terms of the, the various kinds of data that need to be ingested, the processing that needs to happen on that data, and doing it without having to relearn everything that you've learned in the last 20 years, but rather applying all of those principles in the same, the same platform that you've been comfortable with. And that's, that's been our message. So you guys have been around for 20 some years. Yes. So, and your partners, well, I'm sure a lot of them have been as well. So what do you see as the biggest challenge for your partners and your, your customers to move into more of a big data, real-time analytics type company? Yeah. How, what are they grappling with the most? You know, what's interesting is, um, in the conference earlier today, somebody mentioned that we've always been doing big data because big is all relative. Exactly. And that's exactly. very true. Yeah. Yeah, I've been with the company with Informatica now for about a uh, little over eight years. And I remember that when I, when I joined Informatica, processing 10 terabytes was big. It was massive. You know, people were struggling with that problem. Now we are working with customers that are processing you know, many times that in an hour and dealing with petabytes of scale. And the, the effective challenge that people have had is they understand what big data can deliver for them in terms of value, in terms of cost-effective processing, in terms of being able to get value from data that, frankly, did not quite meet the bar um, of uh, you know, maintaining it and, and sort of supporting it and processing it, because of which they never stored it in the past. They just discarded all of that data. Now they understand the value, but their challenge ends up being, how do I take this concept of big data and put it into practice? And that's where the skills gap hits you really hard. Because if you have to learn new languages, if you have to learn new environments, and effectively work across them, that's a huge barrier to entry. So for us, the way we try and address that problem is by working with all the distribution partners, all the ISVs that you see here, that have Hadoop offerings with the, the SIs, the system integrators, um, and providing a platform on which they literally have many hundreds of thousands of developers trained already. They have, you know, literally across the, the globe today, if you count all the global system integrators, if you count all of our customers, there are many, many, many hundreds of thousands of developers who have Informatica skills. Now what if every single Informatica developer automatically became a Hadoop developer with no new training, with no new, you know, tooling or accoutrement to go with it? What value does that bring to you? And that's the value proposition. And the way we are engaging with all of these partners is by enabling them to use what they've already got in terms of these skill sets, in terms of these, these uh, platform capabilities, and utilizing them for dealing with massive amounts of data on Hadoop. So how are you bridging that gap between what they have and where they want to go? I mean, you are bridging a gap there, right? Yeah, we yeah. are. And, and the way we are doing it is, um, through our virtual data machine, we call it Vibe. And this is one of the, okay. the ways in which uh, we differentiate ourselves. So as a company, we've always had this philosophy that technology is going to change under the covers. And you have to adopt that change, you have to embrace that change. And you know, just going back eight years, we had just made the transition from using OLTP databases, like the oracles of yeah, the world, yeah. to using OLAP systems, specialized for query yeah. processing, like the Teradatas of the world. Well, since then, we've seen the appliances, the appliance wars, 
we've seen uh, in-memory systems, we have seen Hadoop, and now we are seeing you know systems in the cloud, like Amazon, you know, uh, Redshift. Yeah. There's, there's all this transition that's happening. Technology is evolving in various ways. And the one thing that I feel confident about is that this isn't the end. There's going to be more. There's okay. going to be something more coming from the Hadoop community and from outside. So what we instrumented in our product through the Vibe engine is the ability to seamlessly work in any of these environments. Giving the same common development environment and fulfilling this promise of map once, deploy anywhere. You can map in our environment, work in an environment that you're familiar with, that you've been trained on for the last 20 years, like you said, and run it on your traditional you know, Teradata systems, in our own grid, on Hadoop. We can go against cloud-based systems, we can run in the cloud. So taking that to the end, in a way, by making sure that any new environment that comes out, we are able to help our customers run on that environment by providing that abstraction layer. That's really what Vibe is all about, and that's how we bridge that gap. Interesting, so you're kind of uh, predict, or not predicting, but you're hedging the future for a lot it's, of companies. That's interesting. That's, uh, that was like almost uh, verbatim the quote that somebody uh, recently talked about when they were talking about Informatica. And they said, you know, Informatica is my, is my future proofing. Yeah, they yeah. are my insurance policy. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really the way we look at it. I mean, I think if we do a good job, it would be to help our customers take advantage of the greatest and best that comes out. And we know that that's going to constantly change and constantly evolve, but we can be the, the one common thread that lets them tie all of this together. Okay, so Ash, from a personal perspective, if there was one problem in the world that we think data could solve, and that if we apply data to it well, that we could actually make a difference and help solve the issue, what would that be for you? You know, personally, I'm, uh, um, when it comes to healthcare, I have certain, you know, certain passionate thoughts about what we should be doing in terms of not only helping us you know, serve ourselves better as individuals, but frankly, taking information that our body is generating and helping design you know, ways for us to live better lives and for us to manage our health better. Now, um, I'm not wearing it right now, but I, I wear uh, one of those many bands. The Misfit Shine or the, the, the Fitbit. Fitbit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to name the name yeah, because there's so it's many okay. of them. But uh, to me, when I, when I look at that, it holds the promise of what we can really do for ourselves. Right, that's, that's able to track my sleep patterns, it's able to track my movement, it's able to track, you know, tomorrow there's no reason how I shouldn't be able to track my blood pressure, my heart rate, just about everything that would be of vital interest to me. Now what if I was able to manage all of my information on a real-time basis, have that fed to my doctor, so if there's anything that's abnormal, anomalies, yeah. anomalies my doctor gets notified, that information is all stored and analyzed on a, on a time-bound basis, on a historical basis. So I can know year over year how my health is progressing. So if there's any chronic issues that I need to be worried about, that can be tracked, that can be dealt with. I think the potential is, is Huge. amazing. Huge, yeah. Yes. And that, that would be my passion. And so, you know, one of the, the big focus areas for us in this conference is all about real time. So we introduced um, our uh, Vibe data stream for machine data. And to me, that was one of my pet projects within Informatica. And the reason why I felt so passionate about it was at the end of the day, I feel that the real promise of big data is going to be realized when you're able to go down to these devices that can instrument just about everything out there. Machines, transportation systems, you know, our, these little devices that we wear on our hands. That's what's going to really bring value because that's going to help us solve problems that we never thought we could solve in the past. And that will need to be done in real time. And I think the, the technology is starting to evolve in that direction. If you see the, um, the announcements from General Electric yeah. and other people who are you know, putting a lot of sensors and putting a lot yes. of things into you know, uh, instrumentation. And along the lines of what we are doing with our Vibe data stream, along the lines of what the community is doing, in terms of supporting more real-time processing. I think we'll evolve to that point where we'll have the infrastructure, we'll have the capabilities, and then it's just a matter of applying those capabilities 
to these problems that you know, humanity can benefit from. So. Yes, Ash, we look forward to seeing where you and your colleagues take this in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.